Okay, guys, this is going to be my review of Mandalorian Season 2, Chapter 14, Episode 6. The tragedy. The tragedy. Um, going into this episode, I thought the tragedy was referring to maybe the Baby Yoda, Gro Grogu's past. I'm just going to refer to Grogu as Baby Yoda. Uh, I'm not going to change that. Um, I've just become so comfortable with him calling him Baby Yoda that it just feels natural to me. That's kind of my my center point to his name, who he is. I mean, yes, I think his name's really Grogu, but when you've gone a season and a half calling him Baby Yoda, I mean, it's hard to just immediately adjust. So I'm going to keep calling him Baby Yoda so that you're like... Um, are you calling Baby Yoda? His name's Guru. I'm Grogu, I'm just gonna say. I'm straight up calling him Baby Yoda. Anyways, just enough about that. I thought it was gonna be about his backstory, how he became, how he was saved by the Jedi, what happened. It was not. Uh, the tragedy still remained with Baby Yoda. I'm assuming the tragedy they're referring to him being taken by the Dark Troopers. Wow, I never thought they would make the jump from EU, but nonetheless, I didn't think Ahsoka, Bogotan, and Boba Fett would all be here in live action, let alone Slave 1, let alone Boba Fett in his armor. This episode had a lot of goodies to it, and despite it being 30 minutes, it flew by. Like, it was like, boom, 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 done. And it was, it was wildly entertaining. Um, um, yeah, but I, I will say, with the Stormtrooper action, it felt a little fan film like, like I think like the budget ish and the the cinematography felt a little fan film like. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. And the stuff with the boulder, and the effects, yeah. But but again, I'll let it pass. And still, the stage tech technology, two and a half seasons later, or right, and a season and a half later, the stage tech technology has only got better. So really good there. The action I still looking a little fan film like in the in the in the, not cinematography, in the, the production design. Other than that, it, it was really good action, the Boba Fett action sequence, so it's great. Um, ultimately, seeing the Darksaber again, I mean, and, and even seeing Baby Yoda use his powers more, and I kind of thought this would happen. Everybody's speculating about which Jedi they thought would come. I kind of had a suspicion no one would come, because they're, they're, they're just not going to separate Baby Yoda. Amanda, there's only three possibilities. Possibility number one, they never separate. Possibility number two, they separate and the show ends. Or possibility number three, they separate after the end of a season, but then the next, the, but the premiere of the next season, they get back together. That's the only way. Those are the only three, the three possibilities. Baby Yoda and Mando will ever se separate. I don't think they're going to separate and end Baby Yoda's story because a lot of people got into Mandalorian because of Baby Yoda. After it aired the first day, everybody goes on their Instagram or YouTube or Twitter and like, oh, who's this cute baby? Oh, it's from the Mandalorian? Let me watch. And it's been, in a, it's been a lot of people's gateway into Star Wars because, oh, a cute little baby. Let me you know, invest in the show, you know. So I think taking that away would piss off a lot of fans that because that, there's plenty of people. There's tons of people out there that don't like Star Wars, but like this show because of Baby Yoda. Because it's so cute and has its own character arc, which is, I think, making a Baby Yoda who doesn't talk, that's a puppet, and still make him have a character arc is pretty, pretty cool. The, and this has a lot of WTF moments. WTF moments where the Razor Crest blows up, Grogu or Baby Yoda, whatever you prefer, getting taken away by the Dark Trooper. Seeing, seeing the Dark Saber again. I obviously knew we would probably see the Dark Saber again, but not just seeing the Dark Saber again, but seeing it in this episode was something so unexpected, and this sets up the next two episodes really well. Because this ep this season's, I feel like, sort of taking the model of the previous season, it seems like. Where it's kind of... Season 1 was kind of like, 
individual episode, individual episode building up, culminating to the big final arc. The f- you know, kind of having episodes 7 and 8 of season 1 being ca- kind of like a two-parter. Like, 7's part 1, 8's part 2. And I think that's what they're building up to. And it's crazy to say. Crazy to say. But there's only two more episodes this season. To me, I find that crazy. Considering it didn't even seem that long ago that episode one came out. But technically, it's been five weeks later. Which is kind of crazy. Shh. Um, you know, kind of crazy that it's been five weeks later since episode one one because it didn't feel like that you know um and i think what they're gonna do is well because they already set up next episode they're looking for one of the bounty hunters from episode six of season one i don't know why they would need him i'm trying to think why i don't i don't know why um um so that's that's one thing another thing is um hmm, what else so so yeah they're they're they're, they're on navarro so Cara Dune and um, and Grief Karga most definitely probably gonna be in this episode. Um, and so my thought is next episode is gonna be on Navarro, then the episode after that, then they're gonna go um, and find Baby Yoda, and which which sets up a great kind of hour arc, you know, for the next episodes of the coming. And I'm stoked for season three and 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 so on so far. So. And I think this kind of Disney plot, like, this is honestly could be, you know, I think this analogy or could be true. It might become that. You know, the, like, think about the Arrowverse. Think about the Arrowverse of kind of how you have Arrow and that spun off to the Flash and Batwoman and all that stuff. And you know how when they introduce certain sh- characters that in, that become, that have their own show, they kind of introduce them in... A different show, you know what I mean? Like, think about this. Batwoman didn't... St- the first time we saw Batwoman was not in Batwoman. It was in the crossover event, I, th- I believe. So, that seems to be what they might be doing with this kind of Disney plus Star Wars universe inside a grander universe. So, so we could get an Ahsoka show. It's already been, not confirmed, but already been heavy, heavy speculated that the Boba Fett show is already in production. We know Mandalorian Season 3 is happening. Um, so it kind of like this, uh, and then maybe Ahsoka, maybe Bogotan. Because all, there's so many different plot lines set up in Mandalorian Season 2 that clearly not all of them will get shown. Like, the, the stuff with Ahsoka and Thrawn, the stuff with Bogotan and the Darksaber and ruling Mandalore. Maybe that'll get solved. And this episode, we don't even know if Bogotan's going to be in the rest of the season. Definitely not Ahsoka. I don't think... Cobb Banff, maybe, I don't know, so, there's a lot of different directions this can go, so, I'm excited to see, stay tuned for videos coming at you.